Hi everybody, my name is Thomas Craig and I play Len in the Toronto production of Soldier On. Hi everybody, my name is Cassidy. Uh, I play a Woody in the production of Soldier On. And you're, you're watching, watching Q&A with Lady K. K. <laughs> <laughs> Soldier On is produced by the Soldiers Arts Academy, an organization that helps military members and veterans get involved with the performing arts. Cassidy, as a veteran, and Tom as an actor, what similarities do you notice between the two positions? Well, we can start with the word. I mean, you go to war with a company of men or women and you join a theater company. So immediately you're, you're starting to make those links. But again, it's not just vocabulary. It takes, you're nervous before you go on stage. Right. Just like you're nervous before you go into a firefight. So it takes a lot of trust to know that you're going to go out there and the other people are going to do their job so that everybody gets the job done. And so, like in theater, you know, to get up on stage, you got to trust that they're going to do it, just like in conflict. So you create that brotherhood of, of trust and, again, common, the common thread of we just did something together. Yeah. yeah, you kind of lose your nerves when you're acting around these guys because you know that they've been through things that you would never have to go through. And it's like, wow, why am I getting nervous about going on stage when these boys have done what they've done. So th there's a little bit of that as well, I find, yeah. What, what have you each learned to appreciate from the other's training or background? God, I mean, I grew up, uh, I won't tell you my age, but when I grew up, you just assumed there was gonna be a third world war. So as, through my childhood, we used to play war all the time, just assuming there'd be a third world war. And then you grow up and you realize what war's about, and then you're just so glad that your generation has not had to go to war. Uh, and you wonder how you would react under fire, how you would be as a, as a man or whatever. So, and then to meet these guys who've actually volunteered and done it, it's like, wow, I, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> it's a, a lot of admiration. We, you know, I mean, for, for the veterans that are coming into this, this process, we're looking for mentors, whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. And so then when you find yourself on stage with a guy like Tom, yes. it, you become, he instantly becomes a mentor and you, you watch how he behaves and the professionalism in which he conducts himself. And that's something that you, as somebody who wants to be in this industry, strive for. So maybe he, he, he there's an admiration that comes this way, but it's equal because we're working with people that we want to be in the future. Is uh, Tom, does having actual veterans in the cast change your performance as an actor at all? Uh, I'm not sure about my uh, personal performance, but uh, we could do this play with 17 actors and it would not be the same. We've got 10 actors and 7 veterans and the veterans bring such a unique uh, realness to the piece that real the actors wouldn't. So it would be fantastic with 17 actors, but you would not get that rawness and reality that the lads bring to it. And, and we've got one female veteran as well. So not just the lads, you know what I mean? And can you both talk to me a little bit about your characters and what real life experiences helped you develop the role? Uh, my character is called Len and he's an ex-Sergeant Major. Uh, and when I got the part, Johnny, the director said, Len's the kind of guy who gets dressed up every day, puts his suit and tie on and sits in front of the TV. <laughs> He can't, not, he can't not still think he's in the military, do you know what I mean? So that's part of him. And he's Len from the Legion and he's upright and he's smart and he just wants, he wants to still be in the military. And he's lonely and he's got nothing in his life so he keeps bees. Sounds really sad. It does. <laughs> it does sound sad. <laughs> um, Woody is... Um, Woody's a bit of an unusual character in the piece because he's the only character that we don't have a background on. Everybody else is exploring their background in front of everybody. And Woody, he, he, he's kind of the one that this, this isn't working for because everybody in the armed forces knows somebody like Woody. Right. And he, high energy, um, volatile, a bit of a social hand grenade. Um, and unfortunately, and, and rightly so, with a lot of anger, like serious serious anger, uh, anger issues. And um, I, I, I mean, you ask, what, did I, what do my personal experiences have to can I bring to this character? But I mean, I think that anybody who's been injured uh, or has had their career ripped away from them, um, you do have anger. Mm -hmm. you, you get angry. Mm -hmm. you, that's normal. And, this, you know, and it, the more the public understands that, the better. It's like the anger should be there for a while. It's what happens if it starts to control you. And so I was angry, and I was um, uh, sad, 
and I was feel I, I do I remember I remember the first time I saw myself in the mirror um, you know with tubes and stuff sticking out of me and I bawled my eyes out and you know with words like look what they did to me which is such a victimized mentality such a such a like feel sorry for yourself mentality but it's I learned to accept that it's normal and then I moved on from it so I, I can take that anger and that 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 um, feel sorry for yourself victimized thing and I can apply that to my character which is helpful in your own words how would you describe the importance of soldier on so soldier on everything comes down to communication Mm -hmm. it's why we're the dominant species on this planet and when bad things happen to intelligent creatures they have to communicate to kind of exercise the demons that are kicking around inside their mind, body, and soul. Mm-hmm. That's essentially what art is. What Johnny Guy Lewis has created is, is a piece of communication where stories are explored. It's about people exploring stories while exploring stories with the audience while veterans are exploring their own stories. And it's all, everybody is in this complicated whirlpool of communication. And what ends up coming out the other end is people are just, who are just fractionally more comfortable with who they are now as a result of their trauma. Uh, when we did it in London, I was in the dressing room talking to one of the other, one of the other actors. And we'd been around a few years. <laughs> and we've done a lot of theatre. And every time you do a theatre job, you want it to mean something to the public. You want people to come away from the theatre with a message. I mean... Shakespeare, great, but, you know, Romeo and Juliet, what, I don't know what you're going to, you know, what kind of message you're going to get from it, whatever. This is a play, you, you take away something, you take something away from it, whatever it is, it affects you. And <clears throat> a friend of mine, he's a big smoker, he saw it in London, and he said at the interval, he went outside for a cigarette, and there was all the cigarette smokers, and he said no one was talking to anyone. He says it's the first time, because people were going to smoke, they all chat, don't they? Right, right. He said everybody was just in their own head smoking away. Which is, uh, yeah, unusual, eh? But it's a very entertaining piece as well. That's what we must add. Yeah, it's, 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 it's got an uplifting message at the end, after all the dark black comedy and whatever. Yeah, yeah that and, you know, the, being in the military is a very funny thing. You know, you have to be able to laugh at things that are not particularly yeah. funny in order to get through the day. Right. That humour is, is echoed on that stage. So it, it is funny, and you will kind of go, ooh, that was a bit close to the line. <laughs> so it, it is, that's all in there. So it plays on all our all of our emotions. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, but everybody, you yeah. look, you'll be able to sit in the audience and you'll be able to empathize with somebody on that stage, because it, the story of trauma is not unique to the military or even the uniform services. Like trauma is something we are. It's unfortunately a byproduct of life. So you're going to be able to sit there and go, maybe I don't empathize with the guy who's missing an arm, hmm. but I do empathize with the mother of three and the lack of communication with the, with the husband uh, who's at war. So there's something for everybody in this. Based on your experiences, what would you recommend when trying to reintegrate into civilian life? Well, that's actually an easier answer than, than I think. I, I came to the conclusion that I need to do uh, two things, three things. The first one is you need to surround yourself with people who love you. And that's not to say that you have to surround yourself with people you love, because those are, those are two different statements. They have, to be, they have to love you, because you're going to be hating yourself for, for a large portion of your waking moments. You'll be, there'll be guilt and anger and fear and all those horrible emotions. It's tough to love anybody if you're not loving yourself. But people who love you, surrounding you, will create a, um, a, a ring of fire. Next, and it's advice that my father gave me as I came out of the coma, um, find something you love to do and then find a way to make money doing it. (laughs) Because at the end of the day, you are going to pay the bills, mate. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, you do have to pay the bills and you do have to get on with life. But not many people get the opportunity to restart everything and say, actually, what I really like to do is knit. So I'm going to start knitting socks and see if I can make a knitting company. It helps that he's not a bad actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, compliments. <laughs> so it's, so th- that's two. And the last one is, is it's important to remember that you can't beat biology. 
you know, the body can only heal at the pace that it's going to heal. You don't, no matter how many times you force yourself to stand, like I had to have extra parts of my leg cut off because I pushed too hard. Six months after I was blown up, I had to go back into surgery and have that much bone removed because I took, I, I tried to recover too quickly. So you can't beat biology. If, oh, you've, that's a good, yeah. if you've got a cold, you got to get over the cold before you can do anything, right? Like it's, you, so those, that would be my three bits of advice. What was the most challenging aspect for you during that transition? I, <clears throat> one of the things that nobody warns you about when you're recovering from this stuff is the effects of, of pharmaceutical agents on, on your mind, your body, and your soul. One of the drugs I was on was, was, it was a drug called amitriptyline. And it's a really good drug for neural inhibitors, right? Like, so, it, so if you're getting massive amounts of nerve pain, it's great for stopping that. Unfortunately, it's also used as an antipsychotic. So what it does is it changes your personality. And for the first six months before I realized that was the problem, I did not recognize myself. I struggled to talk to people. I struggled to, to crack a funny. I didn't have any speed with the banter. I just, I had no idea. And I just assumed that part of me had been lost in Afghanistan somewhere. Right. And it wasn't until I was reading the back of the pack, it says antipsychotic, is it possible? The best part of my personality is the you psychotic lost your personality thing? as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I stopped that drug. And wow. within two days of doing that, I was back, back to, to normal. chatting up the bartenders, right? Like, so, so that's, I found that a particularly challenging mm -hmm. thing. The rest of it is, is actually quite normal. Like, there's an evolution of, of being in a wheelchair to being on crutches and then being on crutches to being on sticks and then being on sticks to having a prosthetic and then having to go through the whole process again, which every, and then recap. Like, there's a process. There's a, and it, one leads to another. It's like playing Mario. But that one nobody warns you about. And so I found it particularly difficult trying to do this, not having myself as my best friend. Mm -hmm. Whether a soldier or a civilian, what advice do you have for anyone who is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder? Uh, well, uh, I mean, until I met these guys, uh, I, I don't think, I'm sure I've met people with PTSD, but I, I, I wasn't aware of it. Uh, I would just say, like Cass says, try and surround yourself with good people, you know what I mean? People who love you. But, yeah, I think. It's, yeah, you, you don't know who you meet in life and what, what's going on in their minds, do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. You, never, you never know. You see somebody on the street, you yeah. never know what they're dealing with. You know, even, you know, like we say, civilians, if you're involved in a crash on the motorway, that you, you can have PTSD for the rest of your life just from that. So we've, we've invited first responders to this, firemen, ambulance, anybody who's in that business. Yeah, so hope they come. Now, I was watching an interview with Mark Griffin, who, of course, plays who? Rickshaw. Who? Mark Griffin. <laughs> I've heard him. No, I've never heard him. Never heard him. Never heard him. I sounds like that guy from Gladiator. Oh, Gladiator. Trojan. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. That guy. I've never heard of him. Well, that guy. That whatever. Guy. Yeah. Um, Why is the he mentioned... girls always ask about Mark? Right? Mark. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> he mentioned that this play changes people's lives. So how would you say Soldier On has changed you? Uh, me as an actor, if you're picking a project, I know TV is different, but theatre, you, you, I would want to be involved in theatre that's more challenging people get a message from, rather than just everyday stuff. <laughs> it's, it's hard though, it's like you, you do have to pay the bills, not every job can have a message, you know what I mean? It's, we're in the business of entertainment basically, so it, it's, it's hard to be entertaining and have a message, but if I could be in more stuff like that, that would be good. Um, it, <clears throat> you know, I really like sitting around in my underwear playing video games. Like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of just kind of sitting there and, you know, playing video games in my pants. I, like, that's it. Like, that, that to me is, is an awesome way to spend an afternoon. And I think if it weren't for pieces like Soldier On, that's probably what I would do. Soldier On gives me... It's really cheesy to say, it gives me a reason to get out of bed in the morning. But it's not. I don't mean it like that. I mean it like it's my job and, and it's important. And it's got a message and it's helping people and it's helping me and it's helping. It is, it is a life of its own and a creature of its own. And we're feeding it and it's growing and it's affecting people and it's great. And so when I get out of bed in the morning, especially now when we're in the beautiful city of Toronto and we're on tour with it, when I get out of bed in the morning, I have a big smile on my face because I know by the end of today that people are going to be changed by something yeah. I do. And so as a result, what it, it gives me a, a newfound sense of pride. And I don't mean like the deadly sin pride. I mean like, like the good pride. Well, oh, well, but not like, shut up, like church. <laughs> <pride>. <laughs> what, what I've realized is it, it's not, 
it's not the veterans who it's their families who are left behind they're really getting a lot out of it the wives the mothers the fathers when they come to see it they're like that's why my son's like that that's why my brother's like that yeah. and it, that's a real eye-opener yeah. well thank you so much it was an honor chatting with both of you so excited to be here shame mark's not here yeah we should, we should get more here you, you, you <laughs> next love mark. time next yeah, time oh, oh, i just said all like, whatever you just drop it in there like so mark Rimmon. <laughs> damn it but seriously thank you for being here and you can catch thomas craig and cassidy little until december 8th and soldier on at the berkeley street what's Theater. the silly question I'm actually a huge Coronation Street fan. <laughs> and I had to play it cool sitting here beside the two of you through the whole interview. So I'm now putting you guys on the hot seat. Cool. Okay. If you could bring back any dead character from Corey, whether you worked with them or not, who would it be yeah. and why? <laughs> Well, I don't know if you know this, fun fact, but our writer and director, Jonathan L Lewis, goes by the acting name of Jonathan Guy Lewis, and he was in Coronation Street as Ian Bentley many years ago, and I think he's dead, so I'd bring him back. And I think my bank manager would like to bring me back. I would too. <laughs> <clears throat> I've never seen an episode of Coronation Street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in the uh, spirit of preservation, um, I would also bring my boss and co-worker back. Oh, <laughs> nailed it. Tommy Harris. Tommy uh, Harris. I, 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 yeah, well, I that was my you. that was my third choice is Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris. Wait, there was um, there was a like an absolutely iconic. I, I lie when I have never seen the coronation street, but there was an iconic woman who was a heavy smoker and kind yeah. of. Yeah. 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 I, I was I would because I, I remember every time I turned it on, I would see her, and it's kind of a kind of a. a she used to have all the lines written on, written everywhere. Yeah, really? she had the lines everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's very funny. I bring her back. Perfect. Oh hey, have you hit the subscribe button yet? Because I'd hate for you to miss more videos like this one.